What you're about to see is a real-life story. He worked out frauds by which confidence make more money each year from the Americans with their violence. Braddock. Captain Braddock. Ready. This case is not the usual run-of-the-mill, because the victim's mother-in-law was actually the unwitting instigator. The victim? Well, he was a funeral director. Oh, not the old-fashioned type with the cutaway and the black string tie. Tom Underwood was his name, and he lost a big bundle. He also owes his life and his wife. We'll call this case Kite High. And it all began when Mr. Underwood returned home from a Chicago business trip and found his wife in tears. I wouldn't put up with it for one more moment. You mark my words, Connie. I know what I'm talking about. I've noticed little things. Things that a young and inexperienced woman wouldn't understand. Oh, now, Mother, you know that isn't true. Tom loves me, and he's a good husband. You're very well. Contradict me and call your mother a liar. I'm only thinking of your own good. On Thursday, July the 9th, he didn't come home all night. That was business. On September the 4th, he was seen in Kugler's restaurant with a woman. That was his cousin. Then how about the Chicago trip? He should have been home two days ago. Well, this is a fine welcome home. Honey, what are you crying about? You stay away from my daughter. What? All right, honey, what is it this time? I called the Park Hotel and you weren't registered there. Oh, that. Well, at the last minute, I changed my mind and went to the Carlton. You must have liked it. You stayed two days longer than you expected. The extra two days I spent shooting ducks up at George Green's place in Wisconsin. <laughs> A very likely story. What business is it of yours? There. Shouting about it proves you've something to be ashamed of. Tom, haven't you got anything to say? Yes, I have. For two years now, I've put up with your mother. Now I'm through. I haven't done anything wrong. I never have as far as you're concerned. But she's taken keen delight in conjuring up trouble. Oh, but Tom... Now, wait a minute, Connie. Every argument we've ever had has been caused by her. Look, honey, I know we're in love, but what chance has it got if I've got to report to a parole officer every night? That's insulting! It's the truth! Constance, why are you going to live? Oh, please, Mother. Tom, let's stop all this. I'll forgive you There's nothing to forgive. But there is one thing to get straight. Either she gets out of here or I do. Well, I never. Why, Tom, you know Mother can't leave. Her sacroiliac's twisted. Too bad it isn't her neck. Well, if that's the way it's to be, my bags are still packed. Quite a long trip, out to a western town where a lot of people go to forget their troubles and get into trouble. There's always been gold around here. Originally it came out of the earth, but now it's sitting right on the gaming tables. If your luck is good, you may get some. And that reminds me, if you burn easily, stay home. The sun is hot, and so are the dice. Pretentious, isn't it? And it offers everything it implies. None of that wild and woolly west stuff here. It's a nice spot for those who can afford plush living. And Mr. Underwood could afford it. He went to one of the best of the big hotels, and of course, like most people with troubles, his first stop was the casino and bar. You have a nice choice here. You can gamble or you can drink. Mr. Underwood decided to do both. I'd like to cash a check. I'm registered here at the hotel. Of course. Do you have any credentials, Mr. Uh... Underwood? Thomas Underwood. I think you'll find everything you need here. 
Oh, yes, Mr. Underwood. Fidelity Bank, Denver, eh? And what would you like to place your credit at? I don't know. I guess I got 40 or 50,000. Oh, I, I didn't mean what was your bank balance, Mr. Underwood. I, I meant how much cash would you need daily? You see, it's our policy to have you set your own limit uh, for your own protection. Oh, well, shall we make it a thousand? Certainly. Thank you. This is Sherry. Oh, hello, honey. What's new? I've just run into something that talks in 50 G's and proves it. Well, you uh, think you can handle it? He's as ripe as a cantaloupe in August. <laughs> well, crate him up and bring him over. Right, sweetie. See you later. So long. Pay 20. Beats me. Pay me. Look at him. Bourbon and water. Thanks. Say, you're not doing so well. No, they're only $5 chips. I don't hit it hard. Yeah, that's my theory. I lose 29 on the slot machines. Figure I break even. Even? Sure, I make 20 a day so I can afford it. If I bet 40, I'd be losing. Oh. Well, this isn't my night. No, mine neither. All night this place has been dead. Don't use that word. Oh, sorry, sir. It's just that the shift is so slow, my feet are killing me. I don't like that word either. Hey, I think you're getting stiff. That does it. <laughs> Excuse me for laughing, but you seem to have an aversion to death. I have. Except during business hours. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Give me a Manhattan, will you please? I, uh, I guess I better explain. You see, I'm a, I'm a funeral director. Really? Well, you don't look like one. Thanks. Times have changed. We don't hang crepe on our hats or look like professional pallbearers anymore. I've, uh, well, I've never met a funeral director before. In fact, I was hoping I would for some time to come. Well, I didn't introduce myself. My name's Tom Underwood. And I'm Sherry Pine. It's nice knowing you. You're on a vacation? A temporary one that'll be final in a few weeks. I'm getting a divorce. Oh. Don't you believe in such things? I don't know. I may have to. Unhappy? Call it confused. I think it fits better. And I got a swell wife. But I got a mother-in-law who will drive me to an early grave. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> You're forgiven. But what's the answer to your problem? Las Vegas? I hope not. Right now, I just want to forget about it. Maybe do a little gambling. Care to help me get rid of these? Love to. I was watching you at the table before. You seem to be a pretty consistent loser. What about you? I do all right, but not here. What do you mean? Mr. Underwood, I'm a woman here alone seeking a divorce. I don't think it's the smartest thing in the world to be seen gambling in a public casino. You're absolutely right, but where? A private game. I was introduced into it by very prominent people who also like to gamble without publicity. And it's been fun and profitable. I like that idea of avoiding notoriety. I've had a little trouble at home, but I have certain standards to live up to. I'm quick at decisions, and you're one of them. Perhaps because you're, well, you're sort of a lost soul at the moment. It's close by. Should we take your car? Uh, I think we'd better take yours. I don't think you want to ride in mine. Why not? I drove up in a hearse.
Say, this is all right. I like it. Shall we play? You know, I think I should have gotten some more money over at the hotel. I, I don't have much cash left. Well, they know me. I'll introduce you to Mr. Wallace, and then you can cash your check. Good. Hello, Mrs. Fine. Hello, Mr. Wallace. Feeling fortunate again tonight? I'll leave that to the fates. I'd like you to meet Mr. Underwood. This is Mr. Wallace. Glad to know any friend of Mrs. Pine, Mr. Underwood. Thanks. Mrs. Pine tells me she's had quite a bit of luck here. Do you mind if I try to share it? <laughs> Not at all. Oh, Wally, by the way, Mr. Uh, Underwood mentioned as we came in he'd like to cash a check. A check? How much would you like? Well, could we make it a thousand? Mr. Underwood, it's against our policy to cash checks. This is a private game, not the casino. Make an exception this time, Wally. I'll stand good for it. It's all right with me. You make out your check over here, Mr. Underwood. Thanks. How am I doing? Bad luck to count, but you're way ahead. Thank you. 12, 13, 14, 1500. Not bad. Let's celebrate. Just as soon as I powder my nose. Okay. Nice work, baby. Glad you like it, honey. Amazing, isn't it? Underwood actually did win, and in a spot where he looked like a sure mark. Well, they were very clever, as you'll see in just a moment when we follow up the case of Kite High. Now, let's follow up the case of Kite High. Hello? Hello, Marty. Yeah, Wally. How are you? Okay. How about Underwood's checks? They cleared in Denver. No stops, no questions, no nothing. Good. I'll be seeing you. Cool and sparkling, isn't it? You can dunk your entire gorgeous body in this spring water, or you can just dip your hot little toes in it and forget the dizzy spin of the roulette wheel. Good morning. Mm, morning, Sharon. I called you earlier this morning. I thought maybe we could have breakfast together. Oh, I'm sorry. They have good horses here, and I like to ride the desert in the early morning. Oh, please finish your breakfast. Thank you. Like most women, I'm on a diet, so I enjoy watching other people eat. <laughs> That's masochism. Speaking of riding, we certainly took that 21 game for a nice little ride. Three nights in a row. Wait till I tell the boys back home. I'm a couple thousand ahead. How nice. Hey, you see, I got a system. Each morning, I mail all my cash back to the bank for deposit. Then each night, I write another check. That's a system? Well, sure, don't you understand? That way, they can't win back more than the amount of the check. And I only write one check a night. It's all very confusing, but it's all right. Hi, how are you? Well, well, Mrs. Fine and Mr. Underwood, the two luckiest players in our little family. I'm surprised you'd even speak to us. <laughs> well, the bitterness of the evening is all washed away by the sunshine of the morning. How nicely put, Mr. Wallace. I'm for a swim. See you gentlemen later. Bye. Bye. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Attractive, isn't she? Very. You known her long? Oh, a few weeks. <clears throat> That's long enough to recognize a lady. That's why we like to have her in our little game. I don't want to appear inquisitive, Mr. Wallace, but how do you get a private game like yours started? Oh, it's not very difficult. I happen to know people with a great deal of money. Now, for instance, a Texas oil man introduced Mrs. Pine, she introduced you. Just nice people who prefer the intimacy of my home to that of the casino. Looks like I'm traveling in high society. <laughs> mm. I just happen to think of something. Isn't a game like yours a little risky? I mean, isn't there a chance of it being raided? Gambling illegal in the state of Nevada, Mr. Underwood? Of course, we don't have a license. Oh. Well, I'll see you tonight, Mr. Wallace. I gotta write a letter. Well, you go right ahead, Mr. Underwood, but if you're writing home, I'm sure it can't be for money. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I'll see you later. Oh, Mr. Underwood, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to bother you, but it's about your hearse. His what? His funeral hearse. You have it parked right in front of the casino entrance. That's right. Uh, well, uh, could you please move it around the back? It, uh, it doesn't do the business any good. <laughs> you mean it has sort of a deadly effect? <laughs> That's the funniest thing I ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it. That's the funniest thing I ever heard of. <laughs> well, I'm glad you have such a sense of humor. I'll take advantage of it. Well, that's a bit heavy, isn't it? It won't weigh me down. Which reminds me, you know, I'm such a trusting soul, I never check with you. 
What's the take on our funeral director? Here's the check he cashed last night. $5,000. What are you waiting for? Nothing. I was just going to see the professor. Come on, Professor. You've got work to do. Uh, always work. <clears throat> I could get more rest by being honest. Maybe, but not as much money. Another Underwood check. Hmm, for 5,000 this time, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, <clears throat> how much do I raise it to? 25,000. 25,000, the man says. That means our sucker is in for 40 grand altogether. When you use a kite, you fly it high, don't you, darling? Why not? I never did like funeral directors. Now, when the professor finishes, I'll get that pretty little check cleared, air mail, special delivery. Here you are, Mr. Underwood. Bourbon and water. Thanks. You got a stamp? No, but I'll mail it for you. I love to play post office. It's to my wife. I'd like it to go air mail, special delivery. Will do. What's the matter, Mr. Underwood? You got troubles? Andy, I'm lonely. I had a fight with my family and I left. I did the same thing with my wife. I stayed away two years. Then I went back and rang the doorbell. Guy answered, beat my brains out. I think I'll go home. Mr. Underwood said he thought he'd go home, but he didn't. Who? Oh, Mr. Underwood. Yeah, just a minute, he's here. Long distance for you, Mr. Underwood. For me? Yeah. Hello? Connie. Oh, it's good to hear your voice. Oh, Tom, it's even better to hear yours. You want me to come back? Of course I want you to come back. Silly. Shouldn't have let you go in the first place. You're making a mistake. But, Tom, there's something else that's even more important right now. The bank phoned this morning. Your account's overdrawn. There must be some mistake. Why, well, I had fifty thousand dollars. How bet he's trying to lie out of it. Uh, Tom, they're not crazy. He's probably mixed up with some woman. Mother, will you please shut up? Tom, I'm leaving. Tom, I don't know what your explanation is, but the bank thinks there's something wrong with those checks. They haven't cleared the last one. They suspect that it's. Well, I think they called it kited. They've called the police. Kited? That means raising the amount. I'll talk to you later, Connie. Right now, I've got to see a man. So long, honey. Well, baby? Are you all packed? Practically. So what's the destination? Kansas City. I have a hunch we've drained Mr. Underwood of everything but his embalming fluid, and I don't want to be here when he finds out. What a laugh. He'd be the only mortar in his own funeral. <laughs> <laughs> You'd better step inside. Underwood, aren't you a little early? I should have been here days ago, when you first started kiting my checks. Kiting? I don't know what you're talking about. I want my money back. Every penny of it. And suppose you don't get it. Then I'll call the police. Oh. Right, Wally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's out cold. You swung that vase pretty hard, kid. You mean he's... I... I don't know. We're in a spot, kid. Not if we get rid of him. Yeah, 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 but how? Wait a minute, wait a minute. That funeral hearse of his. What about it? We'll load him in it and drive it out to the desert. Nobody will stop a hearse. 
If he isn't dead now, that desert heat will do the trick. What an end for a funeral director. Yeah. I'll go get the funeral hearse. Sorry, Mr. Wallace. You may not be ready for a hearse, but you are for a police car. We've been watching you for some time. Well, you're pretty lucky, Mr. Wallace. A bunco charge is bad enough, but homicide is worse. Let's go. Come on. Well, that's it. Wallace and Mrs. Pine were working an old racket. Underwood thought that he was winning every night in that 21 game, but each check that he cashed was expertly raised, or kited as we call it, to far more than his supposed winnings. Now they all went to prison, but there are lots of other bunco artists to take their place. Remember, they're just looking for new suckers, and it could happen to you. Well, I hope I've been able to give you some idea of how the con man operates in actual cases. The fact is you'll find con men almost any place. From the scrubbiest parts of town all the way up to the playgrounds of the social set. And in each case, they manage to fit right into the background they're working against. And when you tell a sucker that he's been swindled, most of the time he won't even believe it. But finally, when the truth does sink in, he says, but how was I to know he didn't look like a con man? Well, they never do. Or they wouldn't be in the business very long. Now, can you tell a con man when you see one? Is there any way? No, because he looks just like anybody else. The con man uses only what nature gave him. His brain. Charm. An ingratiating manner and an understanding of human nature that would do justice to a professor of psychology, believe me. And that brings up another important point in the con man's technique. The con man relies on something that I'm afraid is part of human nature. The irresistible desire to make fast money on a somewhat shady deal where you're sure you won't be caught. There seems to be a little larceny deep down in everybody's makeup. Just a spark. But the con man knows how to fan it into a hot flame. And that's just as unfortunate for the police as it is for the sucker. Because once a man who is otherwise been entirely honest lends himself to a shady deal, he's somewhat reluctant to complain to the law. And, of course, where there's no complaint, there's no arrest. And the con man goes on his merry way looking for another sucker who'll keep his mouth shut. Let's face the facts. No one's going to give you something for nothing. Investigate before you invest. Don't be a sucker for these criminals who are so confident they can... See Racket Squad next week, same time, same station.